Hi everyone, my name is Natalie Draper and I am an assistant professor of music composition and theory at the Setner School of Music at Syracuse University. I'm here with my colleague, Annie Laver, assistant professor and university organist at SU. Hello, Annie. Hi everyone. Hi. I'd both like to welcome you to our web series, Composing for the Organ, Composer Interview Project. This web series is a part of a larger project entitled Composing for the Organ, Webinar and Virtual Concert, which is taking place on September 12, 2020 and hosted by Syracuse University. The main goal of Composing for the Organ is to provide educational opportunities to engage with contemporary organ music. As we all know, the organ can be an intimidating instrument for those who have no background in it, and we're hoping to demystify the instrument, not only by presenting new repertoire in webinars, a reading session, and a virtual concert, but also by highlighting discussions with composers about how they approach writing for the instrument. Today, we are very happy to be able to speak with composer Ad Vamis. Ad, welcome. Hi, Natalie. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, by way of introduction, I'd like to give a little bit of biographical information about Ad. He has a background in composition, piano, and electronic music. A musician with a diverse history and skill set, he has played keyboards with the symphonic rock group Finch, and he wrote the music for five Sesame Street albums. In recent years, he has concentrated more and more on composing concert music. His piece for organ, Miroir, was his international breakthrough, has been played all over the world by such renowned organists as Thomas Trotter, David Sanger, and John Scott, and has already been recorded 19 times on CD, including an album of works that was performed by Ann Labor. So I'd like to begin this interview by asking you, Ad, what first led you to compose for the organ? Well, um, it was in 1981 that my wife had to uh, do her exam for organ. And she had to play a modern piece uh, for organ. So her uh, teacher asked her to, um, well, to ask me to compose something for her. And then um, I remember that, um, uh, I, 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 well, I, I composed uh, the, the, this piece, um, but um, there are many things um, that I, I want to tell about this piece. Um, for instance, it is uh, influenced by the influences, influences that I had in these days. Uh, in, um, this piece is called My Chaw. It, it sounds a bit uh, uh, weird, uh, but you know, <laughs> it, it has something to do with uh, uh, um, uh, it was a writing on the wall in Utrecht, the place where I lived, the city where I lived, and um, it was somebody who wants to say me too so he agreed what was written on the wall but it was misspelled and i just before before i um uh, I, I saw this uh, uh writing on the wall i had been to uh, uh um, bangkok and uh, and japan uh, for a commission and um but I still had no title for this organ piece, but then I had these Eastern uh, uh, sounds still in my head, and I said to myself, well, when I uh, put an accent graph, or is it an accent debut, uh, on this um, um, link together, and well, my, my talk, it sounds a bit like <laughs> Eastern, uh, but it, it in fact, it uh, was meant to be uh, uh, named as Me Too, which later on has a different meaning now. But uh, this person agreed which, uh, what was written down on the wall, but he misspelled it. He misspelled it my, to with one O, and I put it together and made it uh, <laughs> um, well, I 
I made two uh, uh, large mistakes, I think. Um, because um, one of the mistakes I made was that in the end, it was a, a, a spectacular piece. And then I had the left hand uh, with a strong chord. And while the right hand had to do <laughs> but you couldn't hear what what he or she uh, uh, was playing. So I, I thought, well, I have to do this again. But this this is nonsense. Uh, you, you ask him something of a person to uh, study on this very uh, hard piece, and uh, this with the right hand, and then you pull with his chord, which is so loud on left hand. And, in any case, you, you, you can't hear what C was playing. And so I, I made a, a, a different ending to it. Um, and then, um, well, I, I thought about two mis mistakes. Well, the other one was not quite a mistake, but uh, I found out the pe that the pedal of the organ when you have a low note, for instance, C is the lowest note on the organ. And when you have a 16 inch or 20, 32 uh, uh, inches uh, sound, the sound comes later. You, you, you do like this on the pedal. <laughs> so I was, as I was in, in, in a, a playing in a, in a band, I, and we had a platform on, 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 on the bass guitar. So the sound comes immediately. And so it wasn't there. Um, but anyway, uh, f from that time, I used to uh, make uh, uh, the bass part more, uh, more easier. So not 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 many notes on the bass. When you were working on this, um, did you get a chance to sit at an organ, or were you doing? Yes. It? Okay. Yes, but not on the organ where my wife uh, would do her accent. It wasn't uh, possible. But um, in the uh, conservatory where I worked, there was a, a, an organ and I could try out what I had written. And it was quite unconventional what I had written because uh, there were two things in the pedal which were quite uh, unorthodox. But you know, I tried them both and it worked. One of them, <laughs> was a um, largely uh, um, influenced by the Sacre du Printemps, the, the Stravinsky. Boom, 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 boom. I had an octave in the pedals and, and the, you know, boom, 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 boom. It was ri like riding a horse or something. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. So, but it worked. That's the main importance. That's great. Um, okay. I really, I, I don't, I found um, when I started this whole project, I asked Annie for some recommendations about pieces to listen to and Miroir was one of them. Um, mm -hmm. And I really, I think it's a, a stunning piece and it's color and it's vibrancy. And it sounds like it's really taking advantage of what the organ has to offer. So I wanted to ask you, um, are there particular compositional techniques or procedures that you found while writing this piece that you think were especially well suited to the mm -hmm. organ? Or if you want to talk about sort of how this piece came into being, that would be great. Yeah, okay. Uh, that was me war. That was my second piece for, uh, that I wrote for the organ. That was in 1989. Um, I remember, still remember how, how I got to the idea of um, uh, making Miroir. It was early in the morning and I, I got to my grand piano and, and tried and, and so forth. And I thought, oh, that sounds nice. 
as a beginning and I recorded it in my studio and then while I was looking for uh, 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 another uh, 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 organ sound in my library I put uh, what I had recorded already I put it um, in a in cycle mode so you every time and I thought well uh, 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 while I was looking, I was uh, uh, singing uh, a tune to it, and it was almost possible to sing this tune, except I had to, uh, um, in the end of this uh, passage, I had to change something to the first beat. Da, 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 da. For instance, uh, but then I thought, well, um, let's make it a, a try. I will try to make an end to it. Then I thought, well, oh. Huh. It work. I, I, I can still uh, keep uh, the right hand the same. Um, well, uh, what shall I try to do? Oh, I forgot to use the pedals. So I repeat it with the pedal. So it, it's the same piece, um, uh, the same, same part. So I, 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 I huh. well, in the end, I, I thought, well, I, I, I will try to keep the, the, the right hand the same from beginning to till end. So uh, it is often called a minimal piece, but I, I know why people call it that way. But in fact, it's not because the melodies are very old fashioned eight bars with four bars uh, uh, as a pre, pre uh, melody and, and Four parts, uh, four bars for a uh, post melody. Is that correct? What I say, pre and past, uh, post. Yeah, that would work. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the very cool things about that piece is that you figured out. Uh, you know, you had this concept of the riff, the the yeah. rhythmic yeah. and melodic riff in your head, but. Um, I think one of the reasons why it's so successful on the organ is you figured out how to um, map that riff onto two different manuals. Yes, so yeah, yes, yes. The right hand is playing a portion yeah, of the yeah, rhythm yeah, yeah. and the left hand is doing the other. And, and I think that's what makes that such a, um, a fresh kind of uh, compositional technique for the organ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, uh, it seems. Embrace the kind of typical well. elements. Yeah. So that's that's one of the things yeah. that uh, that uh, makes it challenging as a performer. Yeah. Um, but as a listener, you're kind of uh, presented with this this slightly changing um, layered approach to the piece where where the yeah. same yeah. rhythmic yeah. 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 is going on through the whole piece. And it you know it strikes me that in that piece and then some of the other pieces of yours that I've looked at that there really is a um, you, you know, your background in electronic music and commercial music, mm -hmm. playing in a band, yeah. uh, seems to really come through in your music. And I wonder if yes. you talk about that a little bit more. Yes, okay. <laughs> because I, I was in America four years ago to, to, to give some lectures at the, um, for, uh, at the university for, um, in uh, Rutgers? New Brunswick yeah. and, and Rutgers in New Brunswick and uh, later on in Philadelphia with uh, Alan Morrison. I went to his uh, Curtis, Curtis yeah. Institute, it's called. And it, you know, I felt like being at home because uh, everyone is so very, very uh, uh, rhythmical in in the states, and the, the older the older organists in in Holland are not. So I was qu quite disappointed when I heard Miwar perform for the first time, because this organist had 
problems with a, a synco. No, a synco. You just do it with your hips. You must not. It was very. <laughs> no, no. It must sound uh, like a, like a, a mambo or something or bossa nova. Bossa nova. <laughs> These are not my words, but I heard later on. <laughs> No, things it just develop uh, the way it does. But uh, that was Miwar and uh, quite, a, quite a good piece. I would agree with that. <laughs> yes. Well, I think uh, one of the things that we talk about as, as teachers um, with our students is that, you know, finding that rhythmic groove is so essential to, um, to a convincing performance. Yeah. yeah, you know, even when there is rubato in a piece, but I think you know that piece in particular is not successful if the performer isn't locked into the to the yeah. group and into um, the groove. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. so I, it, you know, playing it, I felt like, oh, this this uh, really relates to uh, an experience in a you know in, in a band or you know that kind yes. of yeah. ensemble where you really need to. Yeah. Be all on the same page with the yeah, yeah. the rhythm. Yeah. And then also the structure of it when you were talking about how there's, you know, four bars and eight bars and four bars and eight bars, you know, that yeah, yeah, yeah. seems to relate. Yeah, yeah. You've written a lot uh since then for the organ too. Um and I was wondering if, you know, as time has gone on, if you have found um, sort of a summary for yourself of what you find challenging about writing for the instrument and what you find gratifying about writing for it. What I find a very uh, challenging uh, with the instrument is uh, that you can sound like a, 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 an orchestra with one person only. So, because you have the pedals for the bass notes and then, but then you got one hand, but you can make it sound like two, two different parts. Because you, uh, when you, uh, for instance, when you play the melody um, more uh, legato, you know, Beep, 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 beep. The peeps that uh, I, I let you hear, <laughs> that those are uh, uh, oh, do, do, pom, pom, ping, ping, pom, ping, 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 ping. For instance, uh, you, you make it sound, but it's uh, like, like two different instruments, but it's played by one hand. And, um, Lately, I, 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 I composed something for uh, Catalina Vicens, uh, who has a portative, uh, which means in the very old, uh, one of the first organs, it was an, uh, called an organetto or a portative, in which uh, uh, the organist has to do uh, the, uh, has to use the left hand to, to put air in it. So you can only play with one hand, <laughs> the, 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 and, and the, 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 the range of the instrument is quite limited. It's about two, two octaves, and maybe sometimes uh, one, one, uh, one note more. And uh, you cannot play anything. You cannot play. You cannot play everything on the organ. But you know, it's quite challenging. So, so you see how far you can go with it and how you can make and I know that's that's quite quite easy to do but anyway um that, that's challenging what i don't like at the, of the instrument is uh, like the bass. You know, I like the bass to 
be pre precise on time, but it's not possible. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting to, uh, to hear you talk a little bit about your experience with the instruments and probably in particular Dutch instruments. So you're yes, used yeah, to, yes. um, you know, you're used to working with older instruments. Yeah, yes, yes. And uh, I wonder if you might talk about that a little bit. Uh, have you had, you know, can you compare the experience um, you've had working with historic instruments or yes. uh, probably more mechanical action instruments than an American organist, say, uh, where yeah. we're often um, using more modern instruments that perhaps have a, a quicker and clearer speech in the pedal than... Yes, yes. <laughs> Very good. Um, you know, um, for uh, I, I, I will I have here a note uh, uh, of my pieces uh, uh, for organ solo, um, which can be of help to this. Um, you, you remember Toccata Chromatica? Um, that is based uh, well influenced by uh, by a piece by Swelling. The uh, Dramatic fantasy. Yes, yes. Yeah. And why? Because uh, it was uh, going to be premiered in a, in a, in a church where Swaling married the daughter of the major of uh, mayor of. Uh, um, I don't know. Midwalda? No, 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 no. That's. Maidenblick, Maidenblick, the daughter of the, uh, the mayor of Maidenblick. It's in the, up in the north of uh, okay. Holland. And then I thought, well, I must do something with uh, Swaling because um, uh, the the concierge that was the man, man maintaining uh, the building, everything, everything, and selling tickets and doing uh, the uh, filling in the glasses for the Jews. Uh, <laughs> and um, he told me that some older parts of the organ must be uh, must be heard by swelling. So I thought, well, um, I have to do something with swelling. And then I, I thought of this uh, uh, chromatica um, um, toccata. No, what? What what is the name? You wrote you a, a chromatic fantasy. Chromatic fantasy, yeah. And um, I remember that I played it because um, when my wife was still studying at the conservatory for organ, I also often went with the uh, organ uh, uh, organ uh, school to uh, different organs to see uh, how it works, and then we. One time we went to the old church in Amsterdam where Swedink used to play. And then uh, the teacher of uh, my wife asked me to play on that organ as well. And I played the, uh, the, the Fantasia Chromatica um, because it had no pedals. <laughs> it was only by two hands. And later on, Later on, I heard uh, somebody ask me, did, did you play it with the old fingering? I didn't know what he was <laughs> talking about. <laughs> so it was quite interesting. But anyway, uh, I listened to this piece of uh, Sweden, the original. And from that, I started, uh, you know, but, but, but I uh, compare it with being under the influence of, of something. Uh, like, like, like having a bottle of swelling. I like that, and under the influence of swelling, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> under the influence of swelling, yes. Um, um, I composed a triptych for uh, Carson Coleman. He asked me to, because he has a, a project, and he asked me to compose a piece for an organ, uh, which, um, which could be played with one stop. Uh -huh. Okay, and he said the organ, 
the, the range of the organ is four octaves and one note. So from C to D. Uh, C contra, I, I don't know if you uh, use that word in uh, American too. Sure. For low. Okay, C contra two, one, and two. D three. Is, is that correct? I think so. Yeah. I think. C, <laughs> C, C great, <laughs> and, and then you get C yeah. small, and then you get C one, and then C two, C three. So. So this in these. Four yes. Hours, it, there was one stop. Yes. One sound. One sound. It okay. must be possible to play. It had no pedals. No pedals. And um, well. That was, uh, the, I called it triptych. Um, uh, if I get, let's see. And how about um, your experience with organs in different tuning systems? Well, have you written for mean tone or experimented yeah. with that? Well, I, I have written for mean tone, but it, it was uh, only uh, by, by Carillon. Carillon? Yeah. Know? And now it was uh, quite difficult because uh, w uh, when you, well, I as a composer, I, I hear something in my, in my head and try to put it on, on paper, but then uh, I tried it also out on, on my keyboards and then I saw. This doesn't sound at all <laughs> because so, some things uh, uh, sounds very horrible on the uh, mean tone version. <laughs> so uh, I made it. It sounds quite okay. Um, right in a high speed train, for instance, uh, was written quite after Miwar. It was uh, one only one year. Because I asked, uh, well, I got a phone call from uh, uh, the Dutch uh, Fund for uh, Performing Arts. They call it now, but then it was Fund for the uh, Composing Arts. And they, they asked me to write a piece for a uh, uh, um, chromatic uh, uh, bar barrel organ which stood in a museum in, uh, in Amsterdam. Later on, this organ was bought by uh, the Orgel Park. And you, you know that a lot of organists come there. And there was one day that I met uh, an organist and he asked me, well, uh, uh, can you make a version for uh, uh, a real organist? I said, I don't know, I, I will have a look at it. It was possible, but it was, <laughs> it is one of the uh, most difficult pieces that I, I have ever written because I didn't know it had to be, it could, that uh, I didn't take into uh, 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 in, in account that it would be played by one person. Um, so, um, a barrel organ is you can compare it with a normal organ because you got a, a, a sung, which means one keyboard with a, a limited uh, range, and then you got a tegensang, tegensang, um, and then you got a accompaniment, accompaniment, they call it in, in, in Dutch, and it's only. Uh, the range of it is only one octave, and then you got uh, um, oh yeah the pedals the pedals it's only one octave also and so it these are limited uh, keyboards and limited uh, uh, pedals, but it, you can compare it with a, a normal organ. But uh, I I wrote it down and but because I, I got this question from this audience and I said uh, well I have to take a look at it and I, I made a score of it and I, I placed uh, 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 placed it on my website and 
it was the first person who bought this piece was for a girl, an American girl, K Karen Christiansen. Do you know her? Uh, yes. Yeah, pretty, pretty, yes. Uh -huh. Yes, it's a very bright uh, family. <laughs> because they all uh, studied at Harvard and, uh, you know, um, and uh, the brother of uh, Karen, he plays the violin. And, uh, and uh, no, the uh, violoncello, the cello, the cello. And he is also uh, admitted to Harvard now. And Karen has been, I think it's her birthday today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And um, anyway, um, I found out that, in fact, uh, there are, you know, when you uh, uh, re rewrite this piece for barrel organ to an organist, you have two hands and two feet. So I was thinking, what do I do with the feet? Because <laughs> I had boom, pop, pop, boom, pop, pop, boom, pop, pop. Uh, for instance, which means that, that you have from beginning to end, you, you have a double pedal with a long distance between it. Um, but it, it, it's possible to play, but it's a very uh, difficult piece. And in Holland, they, they, <laughs> you know, uh, the meaning is to play it with the same speed all over again and that that you cannot cannot hear uh, the the differences between but it uh changes because it, it you know uh, my wife and i we used to uh, make uh, long uh, vacations in those days when we had no kids um and in those days uh, we were in in uh, in, in uh, former Yugoslavia, and the roads were very bad. And I had a, a, a spoken uh, one spoke broke down of my back tire, and then another one. And, uh, oh, I thought <laughs> I must get off it, and uh, because uh, you know when you have uh, two spokes broken and then you can wait for the third and fourth and, uh, it's a terrible mess so i uh, looked f and i rang uh, uh, at the door and uh, a very friendly uh, man uh, uh, answered it, uh, the, 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 my uh, ringing on the door and he said well i, I can uh, bring you to uh, uh, smith or I don't know what's that called, but but he, he can repair. But this wasn't possible till the next day. So we stayed in, in his garden. We put up our tent, and in the evening he went to our uh, to us and asked uh, us to come uh, to his house. And uh, when we told that we were in in the music, he said, "Well, I play the accordion." and and he placed a map of uh, of uh, Yugoslavia, and he said, "This is one is from that part, and that is from that part." <laughs> and I, so he went through uh, um, all the parts of Yugoslavia and playing a part from that uh, particular region, and. Uh, I had to think of it while I was uh, writing uh, this piece, writing the high speed train. But I found out when I had put these notes for the organist that one part was three, three, two, two. Dun, 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 while the other went da 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 at the same time, and at the same time, <laughs> the bass was another dev deviation. And, uh, you know, that's what makes it very difficult to play. But uh, Karen, uh, she, she knows how to play this piece. And later on, uh, Thomas Schroeder also. So it can be done by yeah. a student. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, there's, there's a history of those uh, types of pieces, not just for the barrel organ, but the musical clock, right? Mozart writing for the yeah, 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 clock, yeah. 
the 18th century. <laughs> okay. And then, you know, human hands and feet trying to make happen what the machine can do. So, oh, okay. Yeah, it's kind of cool yeah, yeah, to yeah. hear that, that there's still that uh, going from, you know, writing for a mechanical object and bringing yeah. that uh, yeah, yeah, to a, yeah. a human performer. Yeah. 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 So we want to wrap up by asking you what advice you might have for composers who are interested in writing for the organ, maybe for the yeah. first time, if you have some, some tips or words of wisdom you'd like to share. Mm -hmm. I have some tips. Um, I found out it is, it's very important to know where, where the piece will be uh, first uh, performed because uh, go to it and try this organ and, and, and maybe there is a, a, a website with the uh, in which you can see the range of, 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 of the different stops that are on the organ as well but you know you have to to to, to hear the acoustics of the church as well because the, this, the, most of the time um, there is a lot of acoustics in the, in the churches, especially well, that's, that's when right. when they are empty. Okay. And in Holland, uh, you know, uh, um, there is a, a declining of people going to church. So, and in in, in concerts too, but. I, I, um, apart from the what's happening right now um that can differ uh, that differs from uh, from uh, which country but in holland uh you know it's about 50 people or 60 70 80 well good concert <laughs> 80 people <laughs> it's, yeah and massive oh, but, but yeah but in 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 germany it's 2,000 people, it's quite normal. Oh, well, that's, that's not a story, you know? But in, in, in Holland, uh, no. Knowing the, knowing the instrument that you're writing for and having experience in the space, that kind of goes back to what you were talking about in your, uh, your first experience with the organ, when you, when you yeah, heard yeah. That, that left yeah. hand chord and the right hand figure yeah. eight, and how it didn't, yeah. didn't work the way you were expecting because when you register the instrument uh, for yeah. a concert, then it's a different situation than a yeah, practice. Yeah. And uh, for instance, when you are uh, playing the, the, this uh, difficult right hand part in, in, the, in the same uh, uh, octaves as, as while you're holding a, a, a big, a big chord in your left hand and try to play. It. You know, only w w w when it would be apart from it, you could hear it, but not, not, not on, on the same uh, pitch as the, uh, as the chords of the left hand. That's very important. Um, uh, one thing that is, I found out, oh yeah, about miroir, which makes it difficult, is that that sometimes you have to play it like this. And I thought, well, I must keep more uh, um, in mind that sometimes it's uh, better t t t to be, uh, to change the, the fingering or the hands playing the same part. Um, because sometimes, you know, sometimes like this, or a low note and then a high note on the left, yeah, you get out of balance very easily. And you can't be uh, back in time. That's it. That's also important. Um, you know, you asked me about uh, my my my, my uh, experience with uh, with the different tunings. Do you know the night heart tuning? Night heart, night heart. It's the name of a. I think it's it was a German. Yeah. Um, you know, 
I, I made a piece, Happiness, on the organ, which had a night heart tuning. And I went to, to this organ to try out different things. And I, I well, it was possible my piece. So, so, so uh, well, I, I, but be, before I started to compose, I, I, I went to see this organ and try uh, things out. Because um, night heart, uh, night heart uh, tuning, um, in fact, meant well. I have to do that from from memory, but I don't know if that's true. But uh, the more uh, clefs you, you use, then the more uh, no, the more um, B B flat. Flats, and yeah. The cross, you know. Sharps. Yeah, the more accidentals, the, the less yeah. uh, pure it sounds. Yes, yes, you have to take that in. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. So I, I took it in account and, uh, well. And wind and unwind, for instance, I went to this church and then I put uh, one, uh, one finger on one note on a D. And I heard one, two, three, um, I have no, uh, I don't know if this is the D, I don't have a, a um, well, I, I knew me, a perfect pitch hearing, I don't have. Well, when I'm working on a, a special piece, I, I have this, but not, uh, while I heard this because it was in the sound. So I, I took advantage. So that's the way how I work. <laughs> but that was uh, uh, on uh, on an, uh, on the organ where the, it was uh, being premiered. Triptych, of course, I kept in mind that it, it uh, should be. Uh, uh, played uh, on a on an organ with no pedals and it, that it should sound with only one one stop that's great uh, you know, yeah thinking a lot about um the instruments that you're writing for but the the really cool thing about your pieces is that they are transferable to a lot of different instruments so mm. oh, um, thank you. you know that's that's the kind of um unique thing about the organ, of course, writing for the organ, is that you yeah. have a particular organ in mind when you're writing a piece, perhaps, but then uh, it can sound totally different as yeah, different yeah, yeah. take it to different yeah, instruments. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went to a concert of uh, Minako, Minako Tsukutani. She's an organist from, from Japan, and she played Miwar. But she had a, a totally free approach to uh, using the stops. So I said, well, oh, that doesn't sound so bad at all. <laughs> oh, I liked it. Okay. And, yeah, yeah. And, and oh yeah, with different tunings. Well, it was, a, you know, uh, there was a piece that I, um, I composed last year in 2019 it was called silent waves i went up to this organ to see uh, how it sounded and then i looked at the pedals and i thought well the highest note is a d i have an organ with the same uh, distance but then the organ is setting well this one <laughs> you know the distance between the notes of uh, uh, much uh, bigger because the pedal has only one and a half octaves. Uh, and 
no uh, one octave and 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 one note so it but it was quite uh, uh, on a long distance the distance between the c and the d was was do 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 that was it <laughs> but it was it's good to, to go upstairs because uh, I said to him, no, I have the same, but my organ, I have a, 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 um, an organ in, uh, from a, a, a Swedish company. And um, because I, in those days uh, when I bought uh, this organ, I also played in a, in a, a blues and uh, band and they asked me, do you have a Hammond organ? I said, I'm so sorry, I don't have it. And I, then I started to listen to, to this, uh, these organs of uh, Hammond and I found out that this Swedish firm sound better because uh, they had an, um, a, a recorded uh, a version of uh, this Hammond organ I place and it sounded better than the uh, the the, the, uh, the digi digital organ from Hammond themselves. But they had also uh, uh, um, uh, they, they 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 made samples of of, of instruments of, and they made samples of an uh, 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 an organ, and it's also on on it this one, and you could buy uh, pedals with it. So I thought, oh, I'll go for that one. But it's more than an organ. Do you, do you know how to work? I think so. Yeah, that's pretty popular here. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. And um, well, let's look. Well, yeah. we, we better wrap this up, unfortunately. I, I wish yeah, we yeah. could keep talking, but... Um, uh, we just want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. It's okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Um, Hope to see you. Oh, well, you can stay. We're just going to take a minute and uh, show okay. a screenshot of your website. So um, we'll do that. So we hope that you will check out Ad Vamos's website to learn more about his music. Um, and then we also hope that you will register for our event that is happening on uh, September 12th, 2020. And the registration website is there in front of you on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be talking a lot more about um, all kinds of issues related to contemporary organ music and how composers approach writing for the instrument. Mm -hmm. Great.